let's see here. You listed in one of the, your past YouTube videos, like your resume of all these jobs that you've had, and you've got a better resume than half the people I know in this county that I live in in Kentucky. <laughs> Did you ever have to or felt a need to disclose your diagnosis? And if at all, did it ever prevent you from getting a job? Always. I mean, eventually, I ha and that's really what made me have to uh, back away from the workforce, is I constantly had to re-up on FMLA, and I constantly had to go on medical leave, and I constantly had to tap into insurance benefits and things like that. It was just a battle. Going to work and... What's that hanging out of your arm? Oh, it's a pick line. It's it was a battle to do to do those things, keep the human resources side of it going. And I'd even my last job, I had been promoted into a position. It, it came to a point where, because of these this chronic these chronic infections, that my mental mental acuity is affected sometimes. I couldn't do that in this position. Like I. People were to thought, you know, because every day I would come in and I'd be fine for 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, I'm, I'm, I'm flush, I'm feverish. Here comes, uh, here comes some pain and here comes some spasms. And here, so I, I had to basically concede to the fact that I really needed to step away from relied upon me to be there consistently and productively. Um, so it, it was. It, it hindered you in, in that way, but it was never, oh, P, we can't hire you because of that, or you never had, like on an application, you never had to disclose that, you know? No, I no. always disclosed disability, but I never disclosed that I had prader willi syndrome. Hey, Ramsey. Hey, buddy. He, he doesn't have his glasses. He just woke up. So he oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Say hi, it's Jared. Hey, Ramsey. <laughs> Look over here, Ramsey. Look. Oh, what oh. oh, he sees this thing there. He loves to look at. Look, who's that guy? You know, Jared. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just woke up. But, but yeah, so so it was hard to work because of the illness, but not because of anything else. That not like specific to pray, not specific to Prater William. And again, that probably is the education, too, that it's not just the initial conditions that kind of come up as, as you go along and, and you grow with Prior Willie. It's the lifelong things that you, you might face that but are more of a challenge for me as an adult or more of a challenge than things that I'm dealing with right now. So as a, you know, an outsider looking in and like especially at the conference, seeing you know, a mass group of <laughs> people with Pride or Willie. Do you feel like it aged the, the just constant, you know, health issues and things that it aged you a little bit quicker than, than you might have? I feel like a lot of, a lot of people that I saw who were only in their, you know, late thirties or forties seem looked a bit older than, than they were. Like, and I didn't know if it was, the syndrome itself or just the, the toll illness takes on your body? I think that um, I'm lucky that I, I have a young looking face and I think a lot of of, of the phenotype and, and the people kids, people with prader willi syndrome are going to have a younger demeanor. Um, and I think, but I think in terms of the wear and tear on the body, skin texture and things like that. It does seem to, my hands are constantly dry. I don't know, you know, there, there's so many weird things that um, I do think kind of, there's some things that don't seem to be as mature and then there's things that are just like, why is it, why, why do my hands look this old or why, why am I feeling this way or, you know, feeling, feeling older than you are. But my mom tells me all the time, she's like, I'm 70 years old, but I don't feel 70 years old. So I don't really, I can't really assign my experience to saying I feel like I'm this age because I just, I only know well, what I, I know, you know? I feel like each child I've had has aged me 10 years. And I couldn't <laughs> imagine if I had a lifelong of battling different ailments, what I would feel like if I feel like this after just, just having kids, you know, like with a tool yeah. that took on my body and, and as a woman, what, what I've dealt with after each kid, you know, I just, 
like I said, I feel like something like that's aged me. So like I said, I can't imagine a life of pain and, and, and issues and what, what that does to a body after a while. There he is. Hey, buddy. But yeah, and you can see he sits up yeah. on his own and alert. Well, he's starting to wake up. He's just oh, <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> You need your glasses on, don't you? He um he was uh taking steps in physical therapy today. Yeah, awesome. So he, he she wanted to work on crawling with him, but he crawled across the room, hands and knees to her, and she said, "All right, we'll work on standing." And he pulls himself up. There you go. Hands. It's He's like I've got steps. spirit. I can do this. Yeah, he um he basically sets the pace for everything, and each week he hits a new thing. Yeah, you're sleepy. I see you your head bobbing. Yeah. And you know, it's not until he gets sleepy or a, that he actually shows his low tone. When he's wide awake, he, yeah. I mean, wouldn't know that he had anything different about him. Yeah. But as he's getting sleepy, you see his head yeah. bobbing. Yeah, I see yeah. But I think all babies kind of do that. Yeah. It's like that sleep drunk. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, buddy. There you go. Hey, Randy. You, uh, did you have anything else uh, that you wanted to ask about Ramsey? Or? Um, <laughs> he's so he's tired. So tired. This is his sleepy time. <laughs> so, are you looking forward to? Um, have you have you thought that you he's going to be in a, a preschool program or anything like that? At three years old, the county preschool, so this um, where we live. Uh, he would automatically qualify with his diagnosis for the public preschool program. Um, mm-hmm. As seen as I have four kids, I'll take the cheapest route. So, yeah. Uh, that that because none of my other kids qualified for it. So let's if if it turns out that he cognitively is right on track and is not showing any delays at all, there is a chance I might put him in a private preschool, like a Montessori program mm-hmm. or somewhere. But more than likely, he'll go to that one, um, and that'll be for three and four, and then at five, you know, he can start kindergarten. But yeah, definitely want to put him in that, and at, when he turns three, two, so in our state, it's first steps, and so mm-hmm. from the age of zero to three, he gets yeah. in hope physical therapy and stuff, and that's all he has. He has physical therapy once a week, and uh, speech we've taken to once a month. No, he doesn't do OT, but they would then do his his physical therapy in school that way. He would get services like that. So we cool. he's so tired. <laughs> you get him he's sleep. Yeah, he, he wants to stay awake, but he just can't. <laughs> well, I am so but excited yeah. for him. And again, anything I can do, any questions you have, anytime, just reach out to me, text me, whatever, and you know. His, uh, his endocrinologist actually told us on Friday she thinks he might be the earliest walker she's ever had wow. with a PWS patient. And That's so awesome. I wanted to ask her, well, what is the youngest so we can like have a goal to, to be, you know? But yeah. I did because I don't want to be that parent. But are you ready to go to bed, Ramsey? <laughs> he wants so bad to stay awake, but he just can't. Oh, he's fighting it. But yeah, I mean, he will know. He will grow up knowing you. Basically, I want him to look up to you like some kids look up to, you know, a a sports figure. Like, that's to live a life like Jared has. Marry, go to college, have a child, whether it's naturally or not, to just live life independently and full. You know, because I think so, unfortunately, he'll be probably be told a lot in his life that he can't. But I want him to see living proof that you he can. He can do more. He can. Than, than he Google will. Tell. Any any doors I can help hold open for him, I want to. And I know that. What I told you before, I share you with every parent I know. If whether they're ten years into this life or brand new diagnosis, have you met Jared? Have you seen his YouTube? Let me send you the link. Oh. Let me show you chronically PWS. Like, and then they'll go and they'll watch your videos. They're like, oh my gosh. I didn't know someone can drive, and uh, you would listen to him talk. You wouldn't know he had anything going on. I'm like, hey, you're here. Yes, watch his videos. Like, there's so much more than we're being told out there. Now, is that the case for everyone or the majority? No, unfortunately. But, again, it's all about hope and, and showing, you know, the spectrum is 
fast. Yeah. Well, Ashley, thank we you so much for thank you. for this, and thank you for reaching out to me. And and like I said earlier today, I don't think I would have done as much. You know, I, I just I'm I'm so glad you reached out and just told me about Ramsey and about your 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 life and. Um, it just really has inspired me to continue to do this, and I will. Like I said, any doors I can hold open for Ramsey, or I, and I hope there's other adults that come forward too. There really need to be, you know. It, it's going to take. It's going to take a lot. We 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 should all be propping each other up, you know. Um, you know, thank you for responding back in February because you know I was so worried. You would think, who's this crazy mom messaging me? You know, and her. <laughs> You harassed me, but like I was so desperate to find hope and to find answers and any example of of something different than the life I was being told he was going to live. You know, so yeah. um, because like I said, Doctor Miller told us there's many people that are thriving. Where I, are I really want to pick Doctor Miller's brain. It sounds like she knows more. I mean, she's well, she gave she me can't a really information. Yeah, I mean, right, but still, right. It's been where are these people? Yeah. Like, Ramsey wants to meet you. I want to meet you. So, yeah, I just, I, yeah, I want to, I want to meet the, these other people too. And I, I, like I said, I've met a few online and I met someone that um, has mosaic prader willi syndrome. Have you heard of that? No. Where they have prader willi um, but they also have symptoms of Angelman's. So they call it mosaic because it affects it's both in between, and it's they're they're high functioning as well. So, um, Angelman syndrome that there were no high functioning that it was no. that was standard you know diagnosis. See, yeah. that's how how little known so much of this is. Yeah, yeah. yeah we all need to to get visible so we all know what <laughs> what what the the effects are and what the potentials are, and you know. How we can help each other so make a better future for little Ramsey. ones like Ramsey. <laughs> absolutely oh did we wake you up oh you, <laughs> you heard his name we'll let him go back to sleep i think fridays at 7 eastern are going to be a live stream i don't i'm see who shows up and you know i'm gonna do that from now going forward and kind of formulate if there's a better time or anything like that but I'm going to start doing that. And my hope with that is that we're not only talking about things, but we're connecting through the, the chat of the live stream that we can all, you know, get connected that way too. So, Well, maybe one day Ramsey and you can talk and have an interview. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Maybe Ramsey will have his own. Uh, maybe he'll take this over at some point. He'll have, it'll be well, chronically PWS I, by Ramsey. He's already got his Polk. own channel, so I yeah. have to do yeah. Take it over, mommy. Step back. But that's, you know, and that's the thing I think I'll have to grapple with. If what if he decides he wants to be private about everything? That's you okay. Know? I'll probably be like, I'm still your mom. I'm going to hear some stuff. <laughs> like, suck it up, dude. You're yeah, you, I mean, you can still, you know, say, I, I guess you can still go around and, and talk about him. But, you know, again, yeah. we're all owed to, you know, if we want to be anonymous we can but i think we have we have to realize it you know if you're doing good you have a responsibility to to show that you're doing good and if you know if you need help you have a responsibility to reach out and there's resources out that for two out for I that too to you know him. i want to raise him with the mentality of you know you have a responsibility to to yourself and to others to, to share yeah. your story and to share hope and to connect, you know, like that's, that's part of being a human is connecting and sharing and, and there's a way to be private and then there's a way to not be, or, or both at the same time, you know, yeah. I share a lot online, but you don't know everything. Right, you right. Know? Yeah, absolutely. There, certain sensitivities and you yeah. know I try and keep my daughter's lives fairly private but like yeah. there's a way to be out there and still still private so. yeah I try to share a lot probably I probably share more than I uh, I need to but I feel like but if you're an adult who can make that decision exactly so like, you know I don't want him to look back and when he's 18 and be like I can't believe my mom put that on the internet you know? right anytime uh, you want to drop in the live stream or um, 
if you have any ideas or anything like that or um, just feel free to reach out to me I'm going to I told you I'm going to Denver in right. October so I'm looking yeah. forward to that 2025 when they have them so it's going to be the big PWSA and, and international PWSA joint convention. Yeah, we yeah. are planning on that one. And that gives us two years to plan, at least, you know, to know it's coming. We don't know where yet, but to save up for that. So yeah, we yeah. will be at, at that one. You, you know, we went to the conference and it was such a mixed bag because meeting other parents with young kids who, mm -hmm. you know, are in this generation, it was so great to connect, share stories, and, and be with people that just get it and understand. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we were there with all these parents of kids who are much older or, you know, now adults. I really had one woman at the pool. She had come up to me. And she saw Ramsey, and she said, oh, I want, you know, you know, uh, what she say? She said, I want to tell you how great it is. I think that you had the courage to come, you know, to your first one, so young and so new in the diagnosis. And, you know, not many people can do that. And they're still having such a hard time. And so you need to enjoy him while he's cute. And, and it just like, and then she would talk about her child and then, you know, that they were doing great. And then she said, but they were still living at home. They didn't have a job. They were overweight, you know, just, mm -hmm. and it just, you could just see that she wanted to, you could just see that the hope was not there for her anymore. That with her child, she was the mentality that all kids were she like, was casting you know, it. and, and so that, yeah, literally enjoy him while he's cute. As if I just kept thinking, how can you not think your child is special anymore? Like, and when yeah. I say special to me, all my children are yeah. special, not you know, special needs but that's the thing it's like you have to be your kid's biggest advocate always right. always and and new parents so I can only imagine how that that shines on you and how you feel about that but it's that's just projection of that parent thinking about her child and the way she sees her child like you said she's casting that they don't do this and they don't do that and we need to find a home oh so the Kentucky we finally had like a meeting um, a few weeks ago, where where all the content, well, a, a, a few of us got together to have a a, a, a chapter meeting, and uh, these two parents showed up with their son who was in his thirties. Had been in a group home, but it didn't work out. They weren't monitoring his food. He gained a bunch of weight, started vaping, and they had to bring him back home. Mm. And they, you could just tell that they weren't very educated on PWS. They were the dad literally looked at all of us standing there as new parents with our, our young children and said, I know you all are new to this and they're still really young, but you want to go ahead and find a home for them now because there aren't any in, in Kentucky. As if that's the only avenue, that's wow. the only path for our kids. They're going to have to be put in a home or stay at home and there's no other hope of, or, or independent life. Like we need to find a home to throw them into. And it just, when he said that, I literally turned and walked away from the conversation. And yeah. it ate at me. And I, I posted about it on my page. Because it, it, it just hurt that that I'm supposed to just give up on him and not, mm. not believe that one day he could have an independent life. Or the fact that any parent took their own hardships and was throwing it on us. Like, again, anytime you show hope, there have been people there to try and just crush it. Mm. And it just. It's been hard, so it, it kind of, in a way, it, it makes us, because there's, there's other moms or dads that I've talked to who've had similar experiences, it makes you not want to be a part of the community. It makes you not want to go to meetings or conferences and conventions because of running into people like that who mm -hmm. try to crush your hope. This weekend, I overheard these dads talking about the group home situation they had set up. A situation like, you better find a home to put them in. It, these families got together. They, uh, through, I think, Latham Centers, they got this funding set up. So not, not only do their kids have, have this home, but they have guest bedrooms for each individual to have guests over, to stay at the home with them, to have their family, friends experience in that home. I'm like, how awesome is that? You know, why can't that be talked about more? Like, yeah, there are homes, but 
there's these wonderful lives in those homes too. And I think there's a difference of doing something like that to have your child protected and taken care of for, but at the same time given that independence mm -hmm. and and all the, the things that you hope from versus I don't want to have to deal with this anymore. I want to put them off on somebody else, which I feel like that's what I got from those parents. They didn't want to have to take care of them and deal with them. He was a burden to them. They wanted to push them off on somebody, you know, a different home. And, and they act like it was just such a burden to have to take their child back, you know, which I get. It can be hard. It was probably a burden. But the way I will never tell anybody my child is a burden. Like, you know, this uh -huh. is you when you choose to have a child, you know, you never know what you're going to get. But that's the, you know, that's what you do as a parent. You take what you get and you, you deal with it. But yeah, yeah, I just like I said, that that's the kind of experience. If that's what his future looks like. Yeah, I want him to be in a place like that where he feels like a person, if, if, not if a burden. Think through those things, and if, if you want, you have to have a vision for your child, right? You have to have an idea of like you're, you're gonna you're gonna be able to do this and this, and even if you're not, I'm gonna have a vision for you that's gonna help you get to a, that goal. And like I was saying earlier to you, I think we texted that you know not driving isn't necessarily you know, your your idea of driving may not be what that child ends up doing, but they might have an idea of what they they can do, whether it's, like I said, driving a go-kart around the neighborhood or whatever, that is satisfying and makes them feel like they've accomplished that. Because if, if you're wanting accomplishment, you can give that child accomplishment, you know, no matter what their abilities are. You can give them a sense of, like, you did this. You know, All right. I want Ramsey to always feel like he's a person. Yeah, he's a person who has value, who can have dreams and hopes and achieve things like anyone else. And I know that what a lot of parents experience is that caregiver versus parent mentality, where they know that bond sometimes is hard to bond or they lose it because well, they feel so much like their nurse. Exactly, the it's it's really hard. And me and my wife are talking are talking about that earlier with our own situation was like how how successful are we as therapists versus parents because it feels like you have to wear the both hats at the same time and I don't think you should have to wear a therapist hat as a parent sometimes you know you should really be able to have uh, more supports out there when you need them even though I got to bond with him for 10 days before he put in the hospital I would say almost a good month once we came home I felt more like this was my patient and I was his nurse because we were doing round the clock tube feedings. We were doing testing and doctors and medicines and oxygen and inhalers. And I, I kind of lost that bond because, and I couldn't breastfeed anymore. So I felt like this was my patient. I was his caregiver. I had all these other kids to take care of her in a home. And I didn't feel like mom. And it finally got to the point when he, he pulled out his feeding tube, he started improving and doing well, that I, that, that I finally, I can't remember if somebody said something to me, I read it and I was like, he's still my son. Like, this is my uh -huh. child. I need to put aside some of this. I need to yeah. just be mom and he just needs to be my baby. And I feel like from that moment on, things got a little bit easier and, and, and better because we uh -huh. were... We connected better that way yep. for a good month. And I think that's really hard for parents to get out of that I'm the caregiver mentality and just I'm dad or I'm mom. And my parents always, um, or my mom had always, you know, made me take responsibility over medicines or if I needed to do some kind of uh, habilitatory thing at home as far as bandaging or whatever. You know, she would help me with it if I asked her the help, but I was always like, oh, let me do it. You know, let me do that. So, um, I don't know if I, if I went with that, but I, I, I just, it's, um. What, your own person, like, you yeah. know, you're, you're not, you weren't, um, if you're capable of it, why not? Yeah. I would like to think one day he could give himself a growth hormone shot. So oh, I don't yeah. have to stab my kid anymore. Cause every day, every single night he gets a shot. I would like, you know, maybe when he's 10, he can he can do it himself, you know, yeah. and, and that's one less stress for me, but yet some responsibility he can take on and, and, and own his 
his mm -hmm. his self, his diagnosis, his health. So. Absolutely, and he he will find that will be helpful to him if he can own those things too. It's going to make him feel a lot bit more in control of his condition. You know, right. that's what that's what I'm trying to get. Like, I'm wanting him to know that I still know he's there. Yeah. That he Ramsey first. You know, not PWS patient. You know.